Uh, I was introduced to emergency medicine 30 years ago. Mary was one of the triage nurses back then. The triage nurses trained us how to do triage uh, as physicians and how to move the department. Uh, the traditional model of nursing, we could diagram out this way. Uh, with the flow of the patient uh, coming in, uh, a clerk doing the greeting, uh, a nurse did triage, uh, the wall was set up. Uh, to discourage people from entering the emergency department uh, and to take their time and, uh, and then uh, they would eventually make it to the back, their chart would eventually make it to the rack and then the physician was to pick up. Uh, how did people like it out front? I would go and spend time out front in, in uh, casual clothes uh, and anecdotal evidence said they hated it out front, okay? Uh, the patients told us in many ways and at many times that it's about time to provide her. Uh, and we knew that we did this very well for the critical patient uh, who would roll in the back of the emergency department. Uh, the team would assemble around the bedside. Uh, direct orders would take place in that method Kevin uh, talked about. You would tell the radiology tech, et cetera, exactly what they, they needed to do and then you'd watch them do it uh, because all the caretakers were at the bedside. Uh, we would then make a rapid disposition on the patient and move on. I will credit Dr. Bruce Janiak, who's a later speaker, uh, 20 years ago as we initiated the Emergency Department Benchmarking Alliance, recognizing the low value of the triage process and said we've got to do something better than that. Uh, he worked with a doctor named Tom Mayer uh, and together they, they worked through and applied early on uh, some of the principles of team triage. Uh, and Bruce has gone so far now as to say, uh, and we'll describe to you later, maybe we don't even need the patients in the emergency department at all. We can see them uh, through tele-processes uh, uh, and, and be able to manage them that way. Uh, we also noted uh, that the difference in the process of, of patients entering the ED is remarkable at that other front door to the hospital, which is labor and delivery. And those of you who hear longer talks from me, uh, I, I can't believe we still take care of patients in the hallway. We move them around incessantly and have to check name tags all the time. Uh, and you go up to labor and delivery and that's simply unacceptable. Uh, and a woman who goes in upstairs, there's no diversion of ambulances. They don't talk about rerouting. They don't talk about turning people away. They manage patients in rooms and consider moving them around to be a safety violation, uh, much less how hard it is for their staff to be able to track people. Uh, and they also have small waiting areas now in the modern era where the fathers aren't waiting out back anymore. How did we get here? Well, it was some belief that we let overtake us that patients and their family members belonged out front and that clerks could be good as screeners and that walkaways are a good idea because they save time for the staff and, and send the riffraff uh, the other way. Uh, and we believed that every patient needed triage and not greeting. Uh, and then in 2007, we had these remarkable cases of people dying in the waiting areas, the notoriety that went along with that, and criminal charges contemplated against emergency department staff. Uh, that's, that's just a stunning step uh, for the community to consider uh, the triage process to be one uh, which would have criminal implications. Uh, at that time, uh, a lot of us were working on protocols which would allow nurses to enter orders. Uh, they would enter orders uh, and then get yelled at by the doctor because they didn't do the right order. Uh, so they didn't like that and they pushed back significantly and there was much inconsistency in the application of those. Licensing issues came up when radiology techs uh, in the state of Ohio, for example, said we're not allowed to accept the orders of a nurse. Uh, it, it violates our license uh, in doing uh, radiology procedures so we won't accept those. Uh, and then the Joint Commission actually pushed back and said any nurse-initiated orders are against their principles. Uh, and so pushback was received from the Joint Commission as well. So uh, looking at the overall issue of the greeting process for patients in the emergency department and what we need to do, uh, we needed to think through uh, and with the help of MTALA and what is a medical screening exam, uh, thought through the roles of, of nurses, clerks, physicians, extenders, paramedics, and, and then why not use the physician as a greeter in a process that uh, Bruce Janiak had developed 20 years ago. Uh, if we actually put the physician up towards the front end, uh, there's actually a few patients who will never get to tour the emergency department. Uh, their tour of the ED is done at the, at the front end. 
uh, a, a small group of patients can rapidly be uh, treated, uh, evaluated, treated, uh, and disposed of before they even have to get back into the back to the precious uh, gold that we have that are beds uh, in the back. Uh, but otherwise, a physician in front can begin to direct the process, a registrar and nurse do their function, uh, the, the uh, partner physician or PA in the back uh, takes care of uh, the rest of the patient needs and then a disposition is made. Uh, in other countries, they use the most experienced physician in the front end. Uh, that was a model that some of our physicians who traveled internationally, in particular to EDs that saw 200 or 300,000 patients a year, uh, that having the most experienced physician in the front, junior physicians in the back, uh, allowed uh, blink, reflex, uh, triage, and, and the most rapid management of patients uh, who were the sickest and the least sick. Uh, again, anecdotal evidence, uh, patients don't come to the ED unless they want to be seen by a physician, uh, and the benefits of providing uh, rapid physician eyes on uh, allows uh, multiple positive benefits. We uh, allow the right patient to get to the right resources at the right time. Uh, if we take care of EMS patients in the same manner, we get them back on the street. We initiate important uh, diagnostic processes. Uh, even more importantly, and beyond the issues of uh, nurse licensing, uh, we can begin to initiate therapies so that patients who need uh, certain types of treatments can begin them immediately. It facilitates the work of the physician and then the age-old problem with where is dad, uh, when somebody either calls in or arrives at the front door, uh, that uh, you tell dad, or you tell the family members, dad's already been seen by the doc, uh, he's already in the back in one of the rooms and already quick regged to that process. Uh, we all know at home today, you, you probably all have, uh, whatever time it is, 11, 12 o'clock in the morning, you all have a picture of what your emergency department looks like at home. Uh, you know, no matter, no matter how many emergency departments we put on this 24-hour graph, they all essentially run in parallel lines in terms of arrivals by hour to the emergency department. Uh, we all follow the same patterns. The only variation is in pediatric emergency departments, which see less patients in the middle of the night and more patients in the after-school hours. Uh, so high pediatric emergency departments have a little change in the, in the uh, sine wave. Uh, nonetheless, you can probably predict what your emergency department looks like now, and you probably can graph out in a parallel way uh, what your arrival patterns look like over 24 hours. Some time ago, we thought a 100-hour goal was appropriate uh, for the management of the median patient working through the emergency department. That would leave us 10 minutes for the intake process, 20 minutes for the disposition process, and 70 minutes for the workup and treatment time. In initiating uh, physician greeting, uh, we looked at the types of patients that we see uh, and try to hone in on those patient groups that we are most going to impact. Uh, patients who have minor complaints, uh, they take little time in the emergency department overall, uh, but even less time if you initiate a, a physician encounter right at the beginning. Critical patients, uh, again, uh, typically uh, brought right to the back. Uh, they're seen immediately by the care team, and there's a little change uh, that takes place uh, with the physician greeting process. Uh, but those with uh, moderate to severe uh, presentations uh, or symptoms on presentations are the one that this uh, process is going to impact most significantly. Somewhere in the 25 uh, to 35,000 is the sweet spot uh, for beginning to initiate this and then lining up the times of the day when patient flow will justify having a physician interact earlier on with the patient. Uh, our implementation steps within EMP uh, were to first of all uh, negotiate with our own physicians. What impact would this have on their flow, their productivity, their patient satisfaction scores, uh, their interaction with nursing, uh, their interaction with clerking, their ability to make dispositions on patients? What kind of, pati what kind of physicians have the right disposition to be able to see patients uh, quickly uh, and move through them quickly? And then within our physician group, we have differences in practice uh, and different levels of sphincter tone uh, that allow some physicians to manage all patients uh, with little use of the CT scan and other people who are a little more tightly wired and believe there's a very rare patient who belongs running through the emergency department without a CT being done. 
how would we integrate this with nursing and their flow and how they've always run the front end of the emergency department? Uh, will it overall improve throughput? Will it improve the Prescani scores, which are used in all of our facilities? Uh, can we reduce uh, bad episodes in the waiting area uh, and actually begin to eliminate the waiting area? Uh, will it enhance or, or decrease our revenues? And, and then how does it work for the physicians who are very concerned about their pay? Uh, so this is a, the, uh, the hit list of the EMP sites that early on implemented uh, a physician greeting process. And let me just tell you that uh, as we implemented this uh, one site after another, uh, those of you who've heard Jesse Durando, he works in the emergency department in Parma, Ohio, which is a suburb of Cleveland. Uh, he worked very quickly uh, with his nursing staff uh, through a physician greeting process called a physician in triage or the PIT. Uh, trained his physicians, his nursing and clerking staff. Um, they, they changed their um, hardware, software, paperware program to be able to implement this. And lo and behold, cut 58 minutes off their overall length of stay, 60% uh, uh, increase in Prescani scoring, and cut their left without treatments in half. Uh, on the physician side, improved their revenue. Uh, it was not easy to find what hospital revenue increases uh, took place. Uh, but they are significant as well. Uh, then we go to Stanford, Connecticut and see similar results. And then we go to North Carolina and see similar results. And then we go to a suburb of Akron, Ohio and see similar results. And then we go to Charlotte, North Carolina uh, with a volume of 100,000 and see very significant improvement in results. And then we go to upstate New York uh, and see very similar results. Does anybody see a pattern here? Kind of just the name is changing on the, uh, on the top of the slides there. Pennsylvania, Columbus, Ohio, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, and an important result in Tulsa, Oklahoma, reducing deaths in the waiting room. Would that be of relevance to anybody here? Okay. And then finally, uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, Mercy Hospital Anderson, where I was serving as the director, we moved to implementation. Uh, a 50,000 volume place. I won't go through the nitty gritty of, of implementation. Um, we found that it didn't mesh well with a certain new information system. I can't say the name, but the initials are EPIC, okay? Uh, and, and that particular software doesn't like physicians seeing patients early. Uh, and, and still to this day working with that company uh, to improve the way that two physicians can be signed up for the patient at the same time not losing responsibilities and for a note that is written by the uh, physician in the greeting area uh, to extend through to the physician who is serving uh, to do definitive care of the patient. Uh, collapses in the waiting room before our group got there, that was an issue and, and the subsequent headlines in the newspaper about people dying in the waiting area. Uh, reducing left before treatment complete and the community lore that goes along with that. Uh, reduce overall length of stay. And then in putting this together, we noted that the, the physician out there is no longer just responsible for the greeting area. Uh, that physician is actually responsible for the overall flow of the emergency department. Uh, and then coming to be known as the flow doctor, uh, that physician sees everyone who doesn't come in in critical condition and need to be seen immediately by one of the other physicians in the uh, back of the emergency department. Uh, the flow physician moves through the emergency department along with their uh, wireless on wheels, not cows. Like many of you, we had a problem in patient perception of cows. Uh, so moving quickly through the emergency department and one nice piece of epic is you can build your preferences uh, so that you can very quickly move through the usual uh, sets of orders that are needed uh, by the flow physician uh, and then wirelessly walk through whether it's the greeting area or going back and seeing one of the uh, arriving EMS patients in the back, clearing people off of boards uh, and, and putting in orders on every patient who comes in who's not immediately seen by one of your partners. Uh, boy, did that begin to improve all of those same parameters, throughput and walk away, and, and satisfaction in terms of our own staff, and that is critically important, and in my, and in my view, just as important as patient satisfaction, uh, and reduction in stress of nurses. And as the nurses recognize uh, the physicians, noting how tough it is to be out front and receiving people, 
uh, and then noticing the physicians really, really liking seeing patients. Uh, our particular setup there, the physician is in kind of key geography where they can see we have three intake rooms and they can see right out the door to the walk-in entrance. And boy, does it give you valuable information when you can see patients as they exit their cars and are walking up a little grade towards the emergency department and all of the stories that go along with that. Uh, the, the patient arriving with the drink and the chips is going to complain of abdominal pain. And the patient who's going to arrive you know, in the room in the back clutching this is happily trotting up the, uh, the grade until they arrive uh, at the front doors of the emergency department when they go into their, into their act. Uh, and the physician out front has a visual on all of this. And by the way, you completely disarm the patient. Uh, when they're going to arrive in your chair, they, they've kind of seen somebody there, and strategically it's always best to have a white coat on when you're doing triage so that they understand exactly that they have been seen by a physician. And as they are pulled in and are going to walk, get, get into their role here, crutched over, you know, sir, I watched you walk up. Thank goodness I saw how you walked so nicely up to the emergency department there. What is it that you're complaining about today? And they're about to launch into something like this, and you say, boy, I, I'm really happy that I got to observe you walking so care, carefree uh, and at a rapid pace uh, with, with a good gait uh, up the hill towards me. Uh, once again, do you notice the negative media stories? Uh, a complete wipeout uh, of that uh, class of events occurring in the emergency department. All right, uh, this is good first practice. Uh, it's a good front door function. Uh, it matches our need for making good first impressions on patients. It helps in wayfinding and for security. Uh, much more important than our role in identifying those patients is identifying somebody who's critically ill out front. And you as the physician lead out uh, with a wheelchair or a stretcher as appropriate. Uh, we have uh, a, uh, a nice group of patients who overdose on, on opiates and other new types of drugs, and it's, it's the non-breather arriving uh, in your, um, in your uh, uh, portico area there. And I have set the record, by the way, uh, you recognize somebody pulling up at a rapid rate of speed and the tear in people's eyes and just something slumped over in the passenger side. Uh, I did a three-minute to AMA uh, disposition on one of those patients. A non-breather, there happened to be an ambulance out front, I roll out with a stretcher, we get the guy on the stretcher, wheel him in the back, you know, pull his pupils open, non-breather with, with pinpoint pupils, wake him up with a milligram of Narcan, he required very little, and, and as he woke up, he said, I'm ready to sign out, okay? <laughs> Three minutes from dead to arguing with us about signing out. I don't think you can do that better using any other system, all right? Okay, uh, so building this is, is very important, and the build process, I gotta tell you, is critically important. And what we learned in some of our sites was if you don't build it correctly, it will fail, uh, just as you would expect with any other process change. Uh, I can't help but think that you can do anything except uh, put a responsibility for flow onto the physician who's doing this. And then, of course, we were asked to flow chart the emergency department uh, and, uh, and this process, and that uh, the system we're in wanted to use it in other sites. Uh, and so we attempted to flow chart it, and, and the, using the usual processes, uh, we put some white paper up on the wall and began to flow chart it, and, and noted you cannot draw a single flow chart to go through the greeting process. Uh, you have to break it into three separate flow states. And that is why the physician nurse team responsible for this has to understand what the entire flow of the emergency department is moving like in order to flow chart the process. Uh, those three levels of activity are not very busy at all, a steady state, and when the back is overwhelmed. Everybody recognize that in your own emergency department? Three states. In, in setting one, open beds and, and a relatively slow introduction of new patients to the system. Uh, in setting three, there are no beds and you're treating a lot of people in unconventional places. Uh, at, uh, at activity level one, there are multiple rooms that are open. Uh, you may even be comfortably busy, but there's no wait time. And the key metric is getting the patient uh, from the front door into a bed because there's no reason to stop them out front. 
Activity level two is what we are working to get to at all time, which is steady state. Uh, and at steady state, most rooms are full, but they're opening on a regular basis. EMS patients are being processed and moved uh, immediately into beds. Uh, and the, the job of the greeting staff is to process incoming patients, register them, uh, put in the initial set of orders, accomplish lab and lock, lab and lock, which is our function in the staff out front, to uh, get the appropriate diagnostics going on the patients, established a, a, a saline lock or in another appropriate access point, uh, and, and then initiate treatment that's necessary. At activity level three, it is too busy. Uh, the rooms are filled. You're likely to have admitted patients who are, who are holding on in the emergency department, and the flow physician has to spend more time managing out front because there are patients uh, in the greeting process that are stuck there. There aren't enough beds in the back. Uh, at that point, the, the uh, front staff is doing traffic control. They're doing true triage because now you have something that has to be triaged like patient care spaces in the back. Uh, and you're doing treatment in the greeting area. Uh, and of course, in these patients, uh, we're sometimes treating them entirely in the greeting area or the old waiting area. Uh, and as all of you, uh, especially this winter, uh, there were times when we were treating uh, DVTs out in the, in the front, administering their heparin, uh, getting them plugged in for next day uh, vascular studies, et cetera. And that's all we had to offer that evening because we were, we were very full. Uh, this is a simple slide, okay? Uh, this, is, this is the role of the flow physician. And when you write the description for a flow doctor, um, this was too busy to put into your handout. It is available if you would like the job description of the flow doctor. And obviously I'm putting it up there not so that you, uh, that you can see every single word, uh, but understand the role of the flow physician has to be a senior physician who's very familiar with the workings of that emergency department uh, and knows how to move patients rapidly through the system and is facile on the use of your computer physician order entry system. We are doing this uh, because uh, consumers have said in other places in the community, they don't get treated the way they get treated in the emergency department. There are very few industries that put the stop in the front and make you wait and wait and wait in subsequent steps. Uh, what we are looking for is, is the open emergency department, uh, which if you look at the, at the graphics here, look more like the hotel that you checked into over the last couple of days. Uh, they put no, no uh, uh, funnels in the front. Uh, as a matter of fact, in some of the Hyatts now, you can, you can sign yourself in in a kiosk. It prints out your key. You never have to interact with a human being. Uh, and, and, the, and you don't even really have to interact with a human being at the end. You, you uh, flip your, uh, your um, key in, into the box and out the door you go. Uh, the turnstile emergency department is Todd Taylor's talk about collecting money at the end of an emergency department visit. And by the way, at Mercy Hospital Anderson, that's part of our process. We have a collections process at the end. Thank you, Tom Mayer, who developed the Custometer, uh, who talked about our incoming uh, groups of individuals being uh, horizontal or vertical, uh, and that makes the difference in whether they're a patient or a customer. Uh, so vertical equals customer equals chair, and actually research published on in our industry says many patients prefer not to be lying on a one inch uh, thick hard pad that smells bad, okay? They would prefer to be upright in a chair. A horizontal uh, person is a patient and requires a stretcher and a room and the dedicated work of your staff doing diagnostics and therapy. Uh, when we build a better practice, we have to bring all of the people into this, including the, and especially the nursing group, uh, the clerks who now are looking at a very different workflow. Uh, the techs, who are a very important part of our greeting team, the physicians, security, respiratory therapy, and others who may be involved in the greeting process. Uh, you have to design your front end so that it will accommodate the work of the team, and in some places your space compatibilities are not very good. Uh, you have to have a quick registration process, and the quick registration works real well if the, if the clinical staff can do quick registration using some of the three parameters, name, uh, date of birth and another identifier uh, or quick uh, assignment of a Jane Doe or John Doe uh, system or, or something similar. 
uh, and then definitive registration that occurs when the patient has downtime. The texts are queued by Kevin's uh, information system screen. Uh, and, and then, uh, by the way, in our system, at point of discharge, the clerks get a, another queue when they're to go in and to do the payment discussion and collection of money if that's appropriate. Paperwork, quick order pages or a quick order system in your IT. Uh, and and uh, supplies like urine cups have to be part of the greeting process. Uh, the more open and inviting you can have the front end, the better off it is. So lots of walls uh, are not a part of the greeting process. Uh, and the tracking system has to be able to move the patients into the tracking system and then rapidly through it so the clinicians have exact IDs on who is in the department. Uh, you can most easily move family and friends to the bedside. Uh, and, then, uh, and then move them uh, out of the greeting area so that it's uh, open for the next patients in. So we have a few patients who arrive, and this is very important. You do not set up your system to see how many patients you can discharge from the front. Otherwise, what immediately happens is uh, the nurses get bogged down doing patient dispositions rather than patient intake. Uh, so seeing how many patients you can see as a physician and dispo in the front uh, bogs down the process, it does not work well. Uh, we built this based on rapid cycle testing. We used uh, our non-busiest days uh, to check this to begin with before we moved to the Sunday-Monday process, which are our busiest and highest acuity days. Did rapid cycle testing, uh, developed the right scripts for all of the staff to use, uh, put the props in place, did the physical redesign, figured out where the EKG and other important machines should go, and then could move them through. Uh, anticipated problems we dealt with were the computers, uh, the space that we had, which wasn't ideal for this, uh, and some nurses did not like it. Some in the front and some in the back didn't like it. And if you have physicians who aren't familiar in our system, those are called firefighters, uh, they don't do this well because they don't understand the flow of your emergency department. So inexperienced physicians in your site will not be able to do this well. We then looked at time measure changes, uh, and, and you have to have all of those in place uh, in order to understand how, how your flow times are, are going to improve at each of these steps. And understand that you, instead of backing people well into evening hours and keeping staff over into the early morning hours, all of a sudden we had a lot more of these people ready for disposition before 11 o'clock in the evening. Uh, and we could reduce our five to two shifts, our 5P to 2A shifts, or the five to whenever shifts is what we called them, uh, we could reduce those down and actually reduce physician hours. In the future, uh, kiosks uh, are available. Uh, and, and the other thing that is really available is the incoming phone calls. Now all of those phone calls go to the flow doctor who anticipates patients in the system and as appropriate either reg quick registers those patients in or uh, notifies registration that they will be coming in. I have seen a couple of emergency departments that use kiosk. For those of you who have eye triage, you know pre-registration uh, can be done with these patients as well. At surge time, the kiosks help you uh, disseminate the flow a little bit so that the people are interacting with the computers or with the staff, uh, and you can break up the flow when 10 or 15 are arriving at a time. Into the future, it will allow us to drive our surveillance systems as well. Uh, and, and apply this uh, on the EMS arrival site. I believe our physical designs will change in regard to this, and this decided to break this all up, but it, it also facilitates disasters. Uh, and then for our friends from Beaumont, uh, Beaumont has implemented what I think is the ideal solution, which is the front is not desk, it's chutes. C-H-U-T-E-S, chutes, that allow rapid processing of all incoming patients regardless of mode of arrival or station of arrival. Stretcher, wheelchair, ambulatory will allow those patients to move in. So we have a new opportunity to welcome people to our emergency department, to greet them appropriately, to initiate their care, avoid bad outcomes, and improve our overall flow. I think that's what we're all about. I will take, uh, I'll take questions in the back. Get Kevin up here. And so we can be on time for our lunch. I appreciate the opportunity. I'll answer questions in the back. Thank you. Thanks, Jim.